Okay, I want to make a quick uh, video to show uh, some texturing techniques. I've been playing around with different tools, trying to get uh, different kind of pore textures and things. And uh, although it's, you know, it's it's easier to kind of just stick to things you know, I wanted to try out different tools, and try out different things and see how they'd uh, work. And one of the things I noticed is that um, it, it matters less uh, the tools you use, it's more how you use them and the kind of marks you're making, really. So it kind of doesn't really matter what you use. So I want to take you through just a very quick uh, video showing you the process I've been using for this sculpt for uh, for a trade show. Um, so the tools I've, I've been using mainly are these tools here. This is just a, a kind of guitar string loop. Um, I made this myself. It's just literally a bass guitar string uh, bent around a round uh, piece of metal or anything just to kind of create that curve. Because if you don't you can fold it like this, you know, you get bends uh, on either end, you know, to, to get corners, which is, is, is fine if you want a straight edge. But if you actually want something nice and smooth round, you do need to bend it around something that is round, even like a pen or something, just to kind of stop it from kinking and bending in the middle. Uh, and the other tool I've been using is this, which is uh, very simply just a piece of square section brass that's been twisted. So I just stuck one end in a drill and one end in a vise, and then I spun the drill slowly uh, to kind of control the spin but it basically means you can um, twist a square section bar and it gives you that nice kind of twisted effect uh, which is nice for raking the surface and I usually use it for smoothing stuff out so if I'm going to like smooth out clay I might do something like this with it and it kind of leaves those little tool marks but they're not aggressive tool marks and they can be easily smoothed out with a finger like that so that's normally what I use this tool for but I started using it for texture as well so I want to take you through that. Okay, so even though I have already textured this, I'm going to, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to smooth this out to show you how this works. So basically what I've been doing is using the tool to nudge. If you press it up like this, just press it and kind of nudge it, you get a very obvious kind of indentation. And it looks weird at first, it looks wrong, but if you do hundreds and hundreds of them, then you can start to create a, a, enough texture that it kind of justifies itself and it doesn't look so strange. When it's very, very smooth and you first put your first marks in, it just looks like you've damaged a perfectly smooth piece of plastic and it looks weird by itself. But when there's sort of hundreds and hundreds more of them, then they just kind of look like they're supposed to be there. So have enough faith to kind of keep going to start texturing up. As you can see, I've been quite coarse, quite fierce with it but it's quicker if you do it like that if you try and gentle and try and position and make each one perfect like this it's going to take too long whereas you just kind of attack it like a sewing machine i'm not pressing really really hard but the more you do it the more you just kind of get a feel for how much pressure you can get away with and sometimes you do want to press a little bit harder than other spots you end up with a kind of a variety of texture so it looks quite coarse but it works quite well so that's quite nice as one kind of texture and then the thing to do with that would be to use my little sponge. It's like this kind of reticulated foam sponge. You may have seen it as a stipple sponge or the kind of sponge you get in fish tank filter pumps. It's basically the same stuff. It gets made in a factory uh, and then, you know, broken down and shipped off to different industries. And each industry calls it something different, but basically it's reticulated foam. So that just very, very simply gives you you know, a reasonably nice texture without a lot of effort. And if you think it's too fierce, you can always, you know, one of my tricks is to kind of stipple it down. Okay, so the other tool I'm going to try is this uh, brass tool. And basically I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm just going to make a series of indentations. And what's nice about using a tool like this, rather than a texture stamp, is you can kind of control the angle you can change the angle by just rotating the tool as you go so you can kind of you know get a nice kind of natural organic shift in the pattern so if you're creating poor texture if you look at a real face or a life cast of a face um, you'll see the indentations the little pores they, they tend to have uh, directions and they're not the same density everywhere. They tend to be more coarse around the cheeks, around the nose, and very often they'll sort of fade off and be, depending on how good the skin is or how young the skin is, you'll find that sometimes the poor texture is almost imperceptible. It just kind of fades off, but 
it's often easier to do it everywhere or to do it you know more extensively than you need and then just kind of soften it back with a brush or a sponge and just buff it back and that way you can kind of you know attack the whole surface reasonably quickly to get it on there and then you know polish it away where you don't really need it and you get a nice natural fade that way so you can see it is leaving a series of little dots because of the pattern of the guitar string but again if there's lots of them and they're all you know cramped up against each other you don't really see them you just see them as a series of ridges tiny little ridges and again they can all be buffed back with the sponge going very lightly with the sponge it's more repetition than pressure to be honest you want to do it lightly but lots of times and then you end up controlling the fade and that's basically it and if you just think it's too coarse or you know too too fierce you can just kind of polish it back there are uh, a, lot, a lot of people sort of go on about using solvents and stuff to thin things out and you can use things like you know this is just some cheap lighter fluid the kind of liquid fluid you know fuel that you put inside like a zippo lighter or something um, i tend to use that because it's you know the easiest thing to find you know it's readily available wherever there are cigarettes sold usually you can buy these um, and there are other kinds of solvents that would work like maybe white spirit or something but this is easily available and it's it's pretty cheap and you get it in a sensible amount it has a you know good cap that doesn't leak um, and it's just something that you can use just to smooth it, smooth it out. But I, I tend to not use it that much because often it can just make it into a big muddy mess. And I try to avoid that if I possibly can. And just use a little bit of this. I can kind of brush this away. And you can see it kind of melts the surface. It acts like water does to clay. It just kind of reactivates it and melts it. So it's very good for kind of like controlled smoothing as a final sort of pass, but the trouble is it, it, it makes it a big sticky mess. You don't really want to get this on your skin. I mean, I just touched that with my finger. I mean, should really wear gloves I'm using this. And you don't want to use a lot of it. You don't want to accumulate a lot of fumes and obviously keep away from flames and everything. But it's a nice uh, smoothing solvent. It works quite well. The other thing I like to do once I've done that is spray it with a bit of alcohol. This is just alcohol in this sprayer. And basically the alcohol doesn't really do anything to actually melt or attack the plastiline. All it does is basically lubricate the brush to allow the bristles to soften it off. But whereas, you know, lighter fluid will actually dissolve plastiline because it actually you know melts it and the brush just kind of helps smooth it around alcohol doesn't do that alcohol will evaporate and it leaves no residue behind so i like using the alcohol just to kind of lubricate the brush and then you can kind of polish it with a brush like this and it just softens things off in a very controlled way and then the alcohol evaporates off and, and leaves no residue so you end up with a clean surface that you can kind of work straight back on again. You don't have to worry about it being slimy because if you use too much lighter fluid, it just becomes a big muddy mess and I tend to not use it. But most of my smoothing out happens with the alcohol and with the uh, tooling, to be honest. I, I don't tend to use much in the way of solvents if I can possibly avoid it. I think it's a, a kind of a lazy way of doing something and it, it doesn't really do anything in a controlled way. It's quite, it's quite messy. So I tend to use as little alcohol as possible. And there we go. And then by changing the light, I use uh, angle poise lamps to kind of reposition the light so I can see how the texture is going to look in different angles. But basically, that's it. That's how it works. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a case of persistence and, and, um, and uh, keeping up the faith. If you're gentle and regular with your texture, it almost doesn't matter what you use. Um, so long as you create a, a sort of regular
pattern and then it, it, it gradually fades off and then you know any kind of shift is, is gradual and natural looking it should kind of work so there we go